At the very southern tip of Norway stands Lindesnes Fjell, and that's the country's oldest lighthouse. The first light was lit here back in 1656, where it was just candles in a wooden tower and barely strong enough to cut through any storms. Over the centuries it's been rebuilt, fortified during World War II by the Nazis, and today it still throws its beam more than 30 kilometres out to sea. It marks the point where the North Sea meets the Skagerrak Strait. For me, this place is more than just history. It's a reminder that guiding light and perspective matter in storytelling too. And that's exactly what this episode is about. Welcome to Cut for Cut. Hi, I'm Stu. In this episode, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is and break down what is some of the filming mistakes that drone pilots tend to do and things that you've got to correct. So let's get started. As a video editor, you don't always get to work with the best of footage and you kind of just got to go with what the client gives you. I'm working with a Norwegian company at the moment and they want to do a kind of intro to their video based at Linda's Ness Fear, which is a lighthouse on this very southern tip of Norway from what I understand. So we've got this story blocks clip, the client picked it and I obviously need to work with it. Now what I noticed to start with is if we go into our markup tools a little second, I've got to deal with overexposure there. And we've also got a horizon issue there. The rocks are a bit hot as well and it needs color graded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the different techniques I applied to this one clip, so about 18 seconds long. They're going to be used for the intro to the overall video. So let me break it all down for you and I'll show you what I did to this one clip. I to treat my layers in LumaFusion similar to how I work with layers in Photoshop just because I've got a background in Photoshop and doing compositing as well as photography. So I tend to treat my main timeline and then add to it from there. The main layer does not get anything done to it, so representation I can then blend into. So I duplicated the main layer, I'll switch it on now, and this is what I call my blending layer. And in here, I've got the blending just adjusted in terms of I've taken the opacity down by 10% to 90%. You can see the sort of blending that's going on here. Let's reset that. Then within color and effects, I've got a dark luma key. Now what this does is it allows me to throw light on the shadows and just play with where my adjustments are actually dropping in. So that's a good use of dark luma key within LumaFusion. Then got an original and in this I have adjusted the highlight and just brought it down a little bit. Even bring down the brightness somewhat as well. Still not making any adjustments to the horizon in terms of straightening it up but I'm mainly focusing on just dialing down the whites and making sure that the brightest parts of the video are just tone down as much as you can get away with. Obviously when a piece of video or a photograph is clipped like this there's nothing really to recover it from which is why when you are filming with a drone you should always expose for the highlights where possible and take readings and measurements. Use neutral density filters and shoot log if you're using a DJI drone, D-Log or something like that. But generally, get as much information out of the video footage as you can, which then makes colour grading a lot easier. This is a piece of stock footage from Storyblocks. We love Storyblocks, but it's all I've got to work with because this is what the client wants. So you do the best you can with it. Prior to adjustment layers coming out, I probably would have duplicated the two layers, maybe even exported them and brought them back in but now we've got the ability to do the adjustment layer so this is set to golden hour warmth and again if we just go into the settings for this particular layer you'll see there's nothing really going on with frame and fit again our horizon is still skew if but i have got adjustments going on so i've got a bit more yellow tiny wee bit more red and i've taken the vibrance down a little bit and I'm just going to reset those settings and that gives me a more either early evening or early morning sort of golden hour sunrise or sunset approach to the video clip. 
At this point, I want to take the information from the first three layers and I would normally export it out and pop it into rendered movies folder. And that then gives me the opportunity to bring it back in and what I call my compound clip. Currently, LumaTouch haven't got compound clips in LumaFusion, which is a little bit frustrating, but it will, I think, come eventually. I don't know anything specifically, but I do think they'll bring nested compound clips into LumaFusion sooner rather than later, because especially with adjustment layers and things like that, is very much a needed tool within our little toolbox. Now if we go into this compound clip, you'll see if I go into frame and fit, I've got the blending now set to soft light. So that's what it would look like normally. And I'm then going into soft light to blend the two together. If we go to our original, there's before and there's after. And again, do you see how I'm pulling down the details so for this, I tend to be adding a lot more yellow and also playing with the gamma and pulling it down. And this starts to put a lot more depth into the shadows and things like that. Makes the sea a lot moodier and you can see what it's doing to the color grade itself. The next layer, again, is an adjustment layer. This time working on the frame and fit and the rotation. So if we go into that, Go to our frame and fit. You'll note at the beginning of the clip, the horizon is still askew and off center. Yes, you could correct it totally, but what I quite like to do, and it gives a little bit more of a dynamic movement when you're filming with a drone, you can get away with this. And that is, I've got a keyframe at the beginning. As you can see, everything's sort of dialed down to zero. 100% and then as I fly into the shot we've increased the size to 108.6 but I've also added a 1.5 degree rotation towards the left so using the right hand arrow and twisting round so I'm letting the drone actually straighten up during flight I think that's a nice little way of Giving a nod to the fact that you've got drone footage here, but also correcting the issue at the same time. And that's purely a positional thing with this adjustment layer. There's nothing going on in colour and effects. I've once again rendered out to the rendered movies folder another clip that is the combination of all the layers below it. Now at this point you could open up another project and work from here, but because I have actually used my opacity within the blending to actually just juggle the exposure i'm interacting with the layers below and that's all that's really going on on this particular compound layer as we kind of wrap things up this takes in mind the straightening of the horizon so by the time somebody sort of has a look around the video clip rather than just focusing on the lighthouse or they watch it for a second time the horizon is effectively straight and I deliberately wanted the blacks to be quite crushed and give the whole video a moody vibe. The last of our layers is yet again another adjustment layer. It just so happens that it's green because I have tagged it green. That's it. Within this adjustment layer, if we go to our color and effects, one thing you tend to find that when you're filming using a drone, especially a DJI drone, is that the sharpening is just way too much and you should really dial it back to zero where possible and then if you need to add sharpening in post otherwise you end up with this very over sharpened clip and this is what we've got here so to Stuart start here so to combat this i have created a bloom layer and you can get to that from all your effects and you get gloom and then bloom above it so it's just a basic bloom layer not bloom big or fog or anything like that you can see the before and after. So it just softens up those brighter parts of the video as well as sort of helps crush the blacks. And that's the settings I've got going on there. And then I've once again got a final color grade and that's a little bit more red, tiny little bit of magenta and a bit more yellow, which I'll just reset. If we go into frame and fit, blending wise, it's set to 100%. 
because it's going to interact with the layers below anyway. So that's all of our layers, of which there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm one over if you were using Luma Fusion without the expanded layer options. But obviously, when you get to the compound clips, you could export these out as a separate project and start with a new set of layers. That is perfectly feasible. And just to finalize things and give a gratuitous plug, the effects that I've added in are from my Cinephonic Volume 1, which you can hear the wind. Then we've got another layer of wind. And if I zoom in a little bit, because we have waves breaking, that sound as well. And then there's a ship in the distance, so you can hear a gentle foghorn. There you go. Now we've got another set of gentle waves. Then the final piece of audio is a score that again the client has provided and this one kind of comes with a bit of a rise or drop effect, very commercial, and it cuts to black. So that's the kind of opening sequence. I just wanted you to see all the different things that I go through in taking a piece of footage that isn't the best. I mean, if the client had the budget, I bet they're filming it with my drone. It is what it is, we've just got to make the most of it. And that's why we've got two compound exports, effectively, blending, and three adjustment layers to get to a usable piece of footage. And that's us for today. If you've enjoyed this video tutorial, by all means, drop a like, share it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. We have a huge amount of people viewing my videos now, which I really appreciate. But if you want to learn the latest LumaFusion video editing techniques, then hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything. And I will catch you on the next one. See you later.